My name is Ahmed Sharif. I'm a senior technical marketing engineer in the SASE business unit. One of the fundamental and the most important business outcomes of the SD1 technology is the ability to improve the application performance. And in order to do that, the SD1 devices will do multiple techniques in the underlay. One of the most important techniques is the ability to utilize and leverage all of the transport circuits between the source and the destination. And there are two different technologies that can be used for that purpose. But the marketing team are always referring to this as a bandwidth aggregation or link load sharing load balancing, and they keep using these two terms interchangeably. But the question is, are these the same? What technology are we using to achieve bandwidth aggregation and what technology are we using to achieve link load sharing load balancing? And the most important question is, which one is going to give me a better application performance? And this is what I'm going to cover in this video. This video is two parts. In the first one, I'll be talking about the technical part of the story. And then in the next one, I'll be talking about some of the use cases. So let's get started with the first one. So as I said, there are two different technologies, pair packet and pair flow. And before I get started and describe how the pair flow first works, let me set the stage for this diagram. We have two SD1 devices and two circuits between them. Circuit number one is three times bigger than the circuit number two. So when the pair flow device, SD1 device receives the flow, it selects one of the circuits for the whole entire flow. And it keeps doing this for three flows because three times bigger than the circuit number two before it starts using the circuit number two. So what we notice here, this technique is capable to leverage all of the transport circuits between the source and the destination, and this is great. However, the link selection for each flow happens only at the beginning of the flow. So what happens if the, if the circuit's characteristics changed later on? Nothing gonna happen. The current flows are stuck on the same circuit until the flow is over. And I'm talking about brownout condition here. I'm not talking about the blackout condition. Blackout is easy. When the circuit goes down, the other circuit takes over immediately. I'm talking about the brownout condition when the circuit is still up, but it is not capable to give me the same characteristics that I selected the circuit in the first place to use for that certain flow. The second problem is single flow can't utilize all of the transport circuits. So yes, I can do load sharing, load balancing, but I can't improve the application performance because the application performance is always between a user and an application, and this is always one flow. And I can achieve load sharing, load balancing, but not equal load sharing, load balancing. This is an unequal load sharing, load balancing. You can assume the flow in the circuit number two is very heavy. So it can take 90% of the circuit and the three other flows in the circuit number one, they can take probably 10% of the circuit. So I can't guarantee 100% equal load sharing load balancing. Finally, the devices who are adopting or using pair flow, most of the time they are relying on synthetic data that they generate on these circuits to discover the brownout condition or to discover the link, the health of the link. And this gives them a slow reaction to the brownout condition because they have to wait and to measure the circuit based on these synthetic data and how frequently they send these data on the circuit. From the other side, we see the pair packet acts in the following manner. When the flow is received by the SD1 devices, the SD1 device takes the flow and divides it into on all of the circuits, packet, pair packet, and it keeps doing it for the whole entire flow. And the subsequent flows will follow the same exact thing. So what we notice here, similar to the first one, it leverages all of the links between the source and destination, which is great. However, link selection happens at each packet. So this gives me a lot of advantage. It reacts quickly to link condition changes because most of the time these devices are relying on the actual data per packet to measure the link condition. And this gives the device a faster way to discover any brownout condition and move the next packet to the other circuit immediately if something happens. And then and the link upload and download are independent in this case. And there are a lot of use cases when we need that. Somebody's uploading files and somebody else is downloading files and he wants to use the same circuit. So the pair packet looked at the circuit from upload and download in different ways. Finally, 
one single flow which improves the application performance can really utilize all of the available transports and this gives me a true bandwidth aggregation i can't get that with the pair flow mechanism i can only get get that with the pair packet so one flow can leverage all of the transport circuits and one flow can be seen by the application as a really all of the bandwidth for all circuits together combined this is the only way to increase the application throughput and enhance the performance. So in the next video, I'll be talking about the use cases, but what we need to take away from this, we have two technologies and the pair packet is the only one that is going to give me bandwidth aggregation and application performance. The other one, which is a pair flow, it is good because it leverages all of the transport circuits, but it does not give me application performance improvement. Thank you very much and please watch the second video.